chai Utra sis father dear Aan ho de lai To feel his presence near Just like a chai Whose mind has not a doubt Aan whose heart is never proud Here I come Just like a child Here I come Oh Lord Here I come Just like a child Just like a child So we can understand But who holds firm Until his mother sang Just like a child Who sings in bright daylight Fearing not the long dark night Here I come Oh Lord Here I come Just like a child Here I come Oh Lord Here I come Just like a child friends and welcome to this midday celebration of the Eucharist and during this Eucharist let's pray for all those who died having no people on this earth to pray for them and for the many people who died due to wars and natural calamities and for many babes who were sentenced to death even before they were born and also for the many old people who were not cared for who were just left abandoned to die to themselves Let's remember in a very special way all these type of people and entrust all of them to the mercy of God seeking for the forgiveness for all their sins that he may forgive them and welcome them into eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, the readings of today speak to us about the way to use earthly riches in order to gain eternal rewards. And money is a tainted thing because when you get it, it makes you desire for it more and more and whereby it also enables you to forget the one who has gifted you that wealth. And we are all called to use this money to help people to share with those who do not have and thereby win eternal rewards. And for the many times that we have made money as the ultimate thing, not human relationships, not human need as a priority, but money in itself and all that it can offer to us. And for all these times, let us ask for God's mercy as we examine our conscience. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant perpetual mercy to your departed servants, we pray, O Lord, that the hope and faith they had in you may benefit them for all eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
first reading a reading from the letter of saint paul to the philippians chapter 4 verses 10 to 19 brethren i rejoiced in the lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me you were indeed concerned for me but you had no opportunity not that i am speaking of being in need for i have learned in whatever situation i am to be content i know how to be brought low and i know how to abound if any and every circumstance i have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need i can do all things through him who strengthens me yet it was kind of you to share my trouble and you philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel when i left macedonia no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you alone only even in thessalonica you sent me help for my needs once and again not that i seek the gift but i seek the fruit that increases to your credit i have received full payment and more i am well supplied having received from epaphroditus the gifts you sent a fragrant offering a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to god and my god will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in christ jesus the word of the lord let our response be blessed the man who fears the lord blessed the man who fears the lord blessed the man who fears the lord who takes great delight in his commandments his descendants shall be powerful on earth the generation of the upright will be blessed blessed the man who fears the lord blessed the man who fears the lord it goes well for the man who deals generously and lends who conducts his affairs with justice he will never be moved forever shall the just be remembered blessed the man who fears the lord blessed the man who fears the lord with a steadfast heart he will not fear open handed he gives to the poor his justice stands firm forever his might shall be exalted in glory blessed the man who fears the lord blessed the man who fears the lord first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you hallelujah hallelujah and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory, glory to, to you o lord 
chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful with the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with that which is another's, who will give you what? that which is your, your own. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear friends, the readings of today speak to us about usage of money and how we need to be accountable to God. The first reading, Paul tells us that he can do all things in Christ who strengthens him. We all need to remember if we are strengthened, be it physically or financially or socially or even spiritually, it, is, it all happens because of Christ's presence with us. This we need to acknowledge. Unless you acknowledge, you would be a failure. Because the one who strengthens you is Christ and everything that you do comes from Him. That's why Paul also expresses his gratitude to God for all the things that has happened in his life. He felt God's presence when he was well off, helped and supported by the Christian communities. And also when he was living with minimal things, even then he thanked God and expressed his gratitude. And this is what we need to develop in our own lives. Whether you have much or little, always to be grateful to God. And everything that is happening in your life is because of him who has called you. This should be our awareness. For we need to remember, God gives with open-handed to the poor. He doesn't restrict himself in reaching out to the poor. And so also, when we are more generous to poor people, God's generosity flows much into our own lives too. We could be reminding ourselves of a small story of a farmer who keeps on shiveling out all the grains into what belongs to God. And overnight, he finds a double about it being shiveled out to him in his field. And what is happening here is, this farmer wants to give more and more to God and his people. So he goes on cultivating and he says, that's the reality even today. So the farmer hardly gets anything for what he cultivates and all his people, be it the small vendors or even other people, or even the people who consume it, if they are having it at a lower price, it's because of the sacrifice of the farmer. And God, because of this attitude of the farmer, he goes on giving it to him much more than what he gives out. And finally, it is God who wins because God is never short of giving more and more to the ones who give more and more. So the secret of this is when you are generous, God is super abundantly generous towards you. If you want to get more, give more. This is what we could learn from this uh, first reading of today.
so we all uh, the, the when we examine the life of jesus himself he though he was rich he became poor so that we who are poor can be made rich what we're not on this earthly things earthly blessings we may think the blessings we receive we see it in uh, in uh, measures of the wealth that you have the money that you have the property that you have uh, remember the wealth the money and the property that is given to you don't mistake as a blessing often people on this earth may, uh, make this mistake they consider their wealth their property their money their bank balance everything as a blessing from god remember it is not a blessing but a more important word that we need to understand is it is a responsibility a responsibility to give to those who lack god has given you an extra intelligence an extra power to cultivate to earn more and to amass more not that you are amassing you are working and god is blessing you in order to make you as a person who gives to his little ones that means he is all that he has given you belongs to god and you are only put as a steward to distribute to dish out to the ones who need it and therefore we could never uh, consider the blessings or uh, regarding this money wealth as a blessing but take it as a responsibility blessing is okay though that is that which you enjoy and you have an option to share the blessings you receive you have an option to share but whereas the responsibility there is no option you have to share it is your duty to share it's your responsibility to execute if you fail in that you will be taken to task you will be asked to give an account of what is given to you therefore what you think as a blessing or a responsibility that comes to you in the form of wealth if you use it differently or to you you need to give an account so what is given to you to distribute to the poor if you use it for your own comfort and pleasure you have to give an account and you could become also the reason for the misery of the poor people on this earth we could consider now all the poverty and the misery that exists upon this earth or around you and your locality you and i are also responsible for that misery for the many times we have used things for our own pleasure and for our own delight than for the basic needs of the poor people this is what we need to consider it is a responsibility not just a blessing and finally can you imitate your god and this imagine all that is given to you is not just for you and if you if at all if you want to understand it through your own family you have 2 3 or 4 children in your family will you give the best to one child and deprive the other of the same thing will you give a best palace or well built house to one of your sons and deprive it to the other or give the other uh, child a hut will you give the purple clothes to your one daughter and the other daughter you just let her in rags this never happens in a human family and when you extend your family into make it into a little more broader you will embrace the entire humanity as a family and see god as a father and god will when you are not showing any differences and partiality within your family among your children then never expect that god will do this partiality and showing in the differences between his children he gives to everyone only thing is he sends he set, sets you as a steward he gives into your hands so that you can distribute and if you don't distribute then you are the cause for the misery of the remaining children in god's family this is what we need to remember we are interested with wealth to share and not to amass it and use it for our own pleasure once a couple was coming to the church and after the mass they were just going out and there were few beggars sitting down near the stairs asking for alms 
and the wife of this particular person takes out her purse and takes some coins and gives it to that poor man. And after walking a few steps away from where the beggar was staying, the husband asks the wife, how come that you go on giving every Sunday, every time you come to the church, giving, dishing out your money to these poor people? Then the wife answers, because she was already expecting this question would rise from her husband. And what did she say? For me, the person who is there is more valuable than these two copper coins or two coins that I have in my purse. It is the Lord who gave me and I am simply allowing it to pass from me to this person. And this is what is called a blessing. Blessing when it is given to you, when you pass on to others, when you allow the things to flow, it becomes a blessing. This is where the wealth turns into be a blessing, not a responsibility, but from responsibility to a greater uh, thing that is called a blessing. And that person receives blessing. And this is how we need to, the small things as giving maybe few coins to the people who are in need, this is where we express our fidelity and faithfulness in small things. And be sure this wife would be interested with greater things in the life to come. And again Jesus tells, if you are not careful in using the money which is not yours, who will give you what belongs to yours? The money that is here does not belong to us, it belongs to God. And God has a purpose for it. And if you don't fulfill that purpose, then you are playing the uh, game that is not planned by God. That means you are failing God. And if you fail God in small things, He will not give you what is eternal. Eternal uh, riches are your own and that will not be passed on to you. What are these eternal uh, riches? Uh, grace is one eternal reward. Then the love that we give to and show to people then wisdom, these are all eternal things. And what is eternal is your own. That will not be given to you because you could misuse them. Because you are not faithful in small things as the mundane uh, wealth and money. When you, don't, when you are not careful about this, when you don't show fidelity in small things, greater things will not be given to you. That is what uh, Jesus clearly explains to us today. And again, we need to question ourselves when we come to the church or the amount of money which God happens to give us and uh, as our uh, earning or whatever, how much do you give it back to God? 2 rupees, 10 rupees, 50, some 500, 1000 rupees. This is, I don't think anybody will cross 1000 these days as an offering giving in the Church. Okay, some people may be there as giving a special donation or special help for certain causes. But regularly, when you go to Sunday churches, I don't think anybody will offer more than a thousand rupees. So, your trust in God is restricted at thousand rupees. Only that much you trust God. Or, unlike the farmer we heard earlier, farmer who keeps on cultivating, who keeps on giving, 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 to the world and to the people and God in turn starts giving, giving, giving to that particular farmer. His trust is tremendous. He never gives up farming. He goes on and God goes on. And whereas we people living in the cities, we have limitations in our trust. We don't trust God. Our trust in God gets closed or capped at 100 or 1000 rupees and that much only we will get. The more generous you are, the more God will show his generous because God gives to the poor with his open hand which has no restriction. He is very generous and same generosity needs to flow, regularly flow. That is what God is asking of us. And we are also asked to convert this mundane wealth into eternal wealth. Each time you pass on a coin to a poor child, or a poor person, you are depositing that in heaven. You are turning it, this mundane wealth into eternal wealth. And that's why the word we need to understand more deeper is, 
they may receive you into the eternal dwellings using this unrighteous wealth to gain friends and when it fails the wealth is not permanent it fails it also fails with our death it fails we have no uh, reason to use it we are not capable of using this wealth when we die so when wealth fails and when your life on this earth comes to an end you will have people in eternity welcoming you into their dwellings this is what we need to uh, acquire using this mundane wealth in eternity only when you do this regularly will you have many homes in heaven many people in heaven welcoming you into their eternal dwellings and this is what god is asking of us to focus on focus on god the giver then on the gifts that are that you see them as gifts upon this earth it's very strange that we human beings make things created by god and created by human beings as idols money becomes the ultimate as this wife of that particular person said for me this human person is more valuable than those two coins and for many if we examine our own conscience there are number of times where we have made this money this coins are more important for me than those poor people who are in rags at the door when you are able to examine this and make a shift make your choice different and remember it's your choice that determines your end and your eternity so what choice do you make and how open are you in and how generous are you in giving to the poor are you as generous as your god is are you as reaching out to god to poor people as god reaches out imagine the family of god the entire world consisting of all the countries all the people all the people who are fighting for food fighting for whatever their reasons are everyone is god's own child and if they are starving do you think that god will be happy and god in turn has given his resources to you and me to distribute just the way jesus when he was multiplying the loaves to feed the 5000 he gave those baskets of bread to the disciples to distribute and remember if the disciples were to keep that bread with themselves do you think the miracle would have happened it doesn't happen so disciples who were obedient to the master and therefore they went out and reached out to those 5000 people and they fed everyone and everyone's hunger was satisfied and today we are also keep celebrating the feast of saint charles the borromeo and this person was also like this person who uh, like the apostles who distributed he was also distributing food to 70000 people a day I remember how things were flowing or grace was flowing out from his hands and how much more god has blessed him the more you give the more god flows into your hands and if you don't have this trust then you will get only what you give if you give two coins you get two coins if you give 10 rupees you get 10 100 100 and 1000 1000 if you give generously without counting the cost even if it pains you but the, you have satisfied and uh, removed the pain of the other person then god is there at your side alleviating your pain and the pain of all his people So let's pray for this grace which is a real blessing. Let's pray for this wisdom which is a real blessing. Money wealth are not blessings but they are a responsibility as stewards. But grace and sharing of love and reaching out to the other person these are the blessings. Blessings will dawn upon you when God looks into your heart and if that heart is a heart that reaches out then you are blessed. So let's honestly pray for this grace that we may reach out to god's people
God, our loving Father, we pray for the church, for your servant, Pope Francis, and for our bishop, Cardinal Bishop, Pula Antoni, and all other bishops in the regions where we live, and for the many Paris priests who reach out to your people, the nuns, the catechists, and the many Christian families that involve themselves in the spread of your word and in living out your word in practice and in their deeds. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless them with your abundance that they in turn may reach out to many people and serve them with what you have blessed them. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the Vivani channel. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless all the people who are working in this channel and for the many people who are supporting this channel through their generous offerings and also for the many beneficiaries who are growing spiritually day by day, mending their ways and coming close to you. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless all these people with a gift of generosity to serve you in whatever regard they are blessed. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world. And in a very special way, we pray this month being the month dedicated to the souls in purgatory, for the war victims, for the many who lost their lives, the civilians and the soldiers, and many people who have died having no one to pray for. And as we already mentioned, the many children who were sentenced to death even before they were born. We ask you, dear Lord, to forgive all of them and all their sins and grant them your eternal beatific vision. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our personal intentions. Lord, you who know the secret desires of our heart, if they are according to your holy will, we ask you to grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. you take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are yours. Oh, as we stand at the table, you say, oh, as we eat the bread, our hearts can't forget, we are the sign of your life in us, we are yours, we are yours. Take a bread, we ask you, take our hearts. We love you, take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours, we are brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, name for, for our, our good, good and good of, of the host, church. Holy Church. In this sacrifice, O Lord, your Son, though innocent, was slain for us and took, all, took away all the sins of the world. Grant, we pray, that it may set your servants free from every failing of the human condition. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for, for by your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Paul Antony our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Oh, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your departed servants and all who sleep in Christ inherit eternal light, we pray, O Lord. For while still in this life they received this, your holy sacrament, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go and live this celebration. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Eternal is His love. 